What separates a species that walks the earth from one that merely sets the stage for its successors? When we compare Homo ergaster, represented so vividly by the Turkana boy, with Homo antecessor, the early European hominin whose remains stirred debate across paleoanthropology, we are not just comparing bone to bone. We are gazing into two evolutionary paths, one grounded in Africa's sun-baked valleys, the other threading through the mists of early Pleistocene Europe, though they share key similarities that link them within the broad narrative of human evolution, their differences are equally revealing. These distinctions not only shed light on their adaptive strategies, but also inform our understanding of which branches of the human family tree led to us and which ended in extinction. The discovery of Turkana boy marked a pivotal moment in paleoanthropology. Prior to this find, most hominin fossils were fragmentary, offering limited information about early human anatomy. The completeness of Turkana boy's skeleton allowed scientists to study the full anatomical structure of Homo ergaster, leading to a deeper understanding of this species' physical characteristics and developmental biology. In 1984, a Kenyan fossil finder working with paleontologist Richard Leakey in the Lake Turkana Basin of Kenya discovered a portion of cranium on the shore of a dried-up riverbed. A 1.5 million-year-old human skeleton, everything except the hands and feet, was discovered after patient and thorough excavation. Kamoya Kimu, a renowned fossil hunter working with Richard Leakey's team, found the first piece of the skeleton, a small skull fragment, on the bank of the Nariokotomi River near Lake Turkana. Subsequent excavations uncovered more than 80% of the skeleton, including the skull, spine, ribs, and limbs. This level of preservation is rare and provided a comprehensive view of the individual's physique. Given this age, this well-preserved fossil should not exist. The skeleton belonged to a boy whose shoulders, arms, and legs matched those of a modern human. His body, trapped between two layers of volcanic ash half a million years apart, was revealed by erosion 1.5 million years later. He may have drowned in the shallow shores of the lake, as teenage boys often make poor decisions. Another possibility is that he was attacked by an angry hippo or crocodile or tiger, which is a nightmarish thought. The fact that his hand and foot bones were the only thing that were missing is somewhat mysterious and could point to something sinister. One of the most striking differences lies in their geographic and ecological contexts. Turkana boy lived in East Africa roughly 1.5 to 1.6 million years ago, in an open savanna environment teeming with predators and prey. This landscape demanded endurance, cooperation and long-distance mobility, qualities that are evident in his tall stature, narrow pelvis and long limbs. These physical features were not simply inherited traits. They were finely tuned adaptations to a hot, dry environment where running down game or evading danger could mean the difference between survival and death. In contrast, Homo antecessor emerged later, between 1.2 million and 800,000 years ago, and lived in what is now Spain and possibly Britain, amidst cooler and more variable Pleistocene climates. The presence of this species in Europe is itself a milestone, suggesting that Homo antecessor had the behavioural flexibility and technological skills to adapt to new and often harsh environments far from Africa. Morphologically, the differences between the two species extend beyond geography. While Turkana boy's skeletal structure displays remarkable modernity in its proportions, the cranial morphology remains robust and distinctly archaic. The low forehead, pronounced brow ridges, and relatively small brain case, estimated at 880 cubic centimetres, mark him as clearly Homo ergaster. In contrast, 
Homo antecessor presents a more complex blend of features. Homo antecessor would have resembled Homo ergaster and Turkana boy in many ways, indicating a broad morphological similarity likely due to their shared evolutionary lineage. Anthropologist Richard Klein interpreted Homo antecessor as an offshoot of Homo ergaster from Africa that failed to colonize southern Europe, supporting the idea of a direct lineage. Jean-Jacques Houblin postulated that Homo antecessor and Tigenif remains from Algeria represent the same population, suggesting Homo antecessor as a junior synonym of Homo mauritanicus. This taxonomic and evolutionary context supports the notion that their morphological similarities reflect a shared ancestry, with Homo antecessor possibly representing a European branch of the Homo ergaster lineage. The fossils from Atapuerca in Spain show individuals with a slightly larger average cranial capacity, ranging from about 1,000 to 1,150 cubic centimetres. More intriguingly, Homo antecessor exhibits some surprisingly modern facial features, including a more vertical face and a less pronounced prognathism, the jutting forward of the lower face, compared to Homo ergaster. These traits have led some researchers to speculate that Homo antecessor may represent a transitional species, a possible common ancestor of both Neanderthals and modern humans. The hominids' teeth were primitive, similar to those of Homo ergaster, but some aspects of their faces were surprisingly modern, resembling those of modern humans. Indeed, some say the face is strikingly comparable to that of modern humans rather than other archaic humans, particularly in its general flatness and the bending of the cheekbone as it merges into the upper jaw, though these features are only known from a juvenile example. In other words, the modern-looking face of Homo antecessor is actually ancient and our species has preserved it. Another key difference lies in dental development. Studies on Turkana boy suggest that Homo ergaster had a dental maturation schedule somewhat intermediate between that of modern humans and that of great apes. He matured more quickly than Homo sapiens, but not as rapidly as a chimpanzee. This rapid growth may have been advantageous in a high mortality environment, allowing individuals to reach reproductive age earlier. Nonetheless, Homo antecessor fossils indicate a different pattern. Some evidence points to a slightly slower developmental timeline, hinting at an evolutionary shift toward extended childhood and greater dependency, traits often associated with increased social complexity and learning. If Homo antecessor did indeed mature more slowly, this could signal a shift toward the kind of cooperative child rearing and cultural transmission that characterize later human species. Anthropologists estimated his height at 5 feet 3 inches based on the length of his thigh bone, and based on the width of his bones, he must have weighed roughly 103 pounds. Based on growth rates, he could have grown to as much as 6 feet tall with a very gracile skeleton. However, Modern human growth curves do not truly apply to Homo ergaster. The boy's anticipated growth was recently revised using growth curves that compare human and ape standards. Scientists now believe he was around nine years old, undergoing a brief teenage growth spurt comparable to ours that would have seen him fully grown by age 12. His exact age at the time of his death was difficult to determine. The lower jaw did have incisors, canines and partially erupted first and second premolars, but no third molars were present. The upper jaw still retained milk teeth, while the majority of the permanent teeth were only partially grown. The traits corresponded to the tooth development of an 11-year-old human boy. His bones were still developing, and the centres of development on either side had not fused in the middle of his long bones his arms, legs, and hips. This provided more proof that the youngster was approximately 11 years old at the time of his death.
The discovery of this ancient fossil reveals that a proto-human form existed, barrel-chested, with a tucked-in pelvis and six vertebrae in the lower back that were clearly adapted for walking upright. His hands were free as he moved, and his should blades in the modern form, implying that he could carry a spear and throw it quickly and accurately, which would have been handy. The world surrounding these first humans was changing, with woodland cover giving way to more open savannah, where he would have to defend himself and compete for meat, fighting over scraps, then ambushing animals and finally actively hunting. The inside of his skull contains signs of what would become our speech centre, as well as an asymmetry in the extra space of the left brain, which is longer than the right. According to one theory, this extra space was dedicated to motor movement programs, which later provided the basic framework for language. Motor programming is also related to the human inclination for right-handedness. His brain was larger than any species before him, weighing around two-thirds of our modern brain, but his behaviour was likely significantly different from ours. Around 1.5 million years ago, tools were symmetrical, meaning they were the same on both sides, but later tools became specialised for right-handed use, which suggests tool-making and language evolved together. Tool use and cultural behaviour also mark a fascinating point of divergence. Homo ergaster, including the Turkana boys' contemporaries, is credited with the development and refinement of the Acheulean tool industry, an innovation that included hand axes, cleavers and bifacial tools. These tools are found widely across Africa and Asia, and they reflect an increased understanding of symmetry, function and raw material selection. By contrast, Homo antecessor is associated with a simpler, older one style toolkit in some sites and transitional technologies in others. However, what makes Homo antecessor so intriguing is not just the tools they used, but the behaviours inferred from archaeological evidence. Cut marks on bones found at the Atapuerca site suggest possible instances of cannibalism, whether as a survival strategy or as a cultural practice remains debated. Either way, it implies a level of social interaction and symbolic behaviour that, if confirmed, would push the boundaries of what we assume about cognitive and social complexity at that stage of evolution. Finally, their evolutionary implications diverge in dramatic fashion. Turkana boy, as a representative of Homo ergaster, stands on a well-established branch of the human evolutionary tree. His kind gave rise to later African and Asian populations and possibly to Homo heidelbergensis, often considered a precursor to both Neanderthals and Homo sapiens. In contrast, the place of Homo antecessor within the human lineage remains enigmatic. Some scholars argue that Homo antecessor may be the last common ancestor of modern humans and Neanderthals. Others suggest that it was a side branch, an evolutionary cousin that, while sharing features with later hominins, did not directly contribute to our own lineage. If this latter view is correct, Homo antecessor may represent a parallel evolutionary experiment, an advanced hominin species that ventured into Europe early adapted impressively, but ultimately faded into extinction without leaving direct descendants. In summary, while Turkana boy and Homo antecessor both reflect the remarkable adaptability and resilience of early human ancestors, their differences illuminate the complex and branching nature of human evolution. One emerged in Africa and laid the groundwork for a lineage that would eventually circle the globe. The other appeared in Europe, displaying a tantalising mixture of modern and archaic traits and raising profound questions about the many paths evolution took in shaping what we now call humanity. But the question remains, what happened to his hands and feet? Please leave a comment and check out our channel's other videos on paleoanthropology and archaeology. Thank you and take care.